That little speech was to open the door to putting your family on payroll. Yes, I want you to save taxes. Quit giving your family money. Sorry, sorry, and many of you have seen me do this before. We pay taxes and give our kids money. You don't get a write-off for that. It's a gift. It's not income to them, but you don't get a write-off. Put your kids on the payroll and take a write-off. Well, Mark, they don't, they don't help in the business. Well, you bet they will. <laughs> they don't get paid till they do. <laughs> They're going to be on the board of directors, board of advisors. They're going to help you with social media. They're going to build your website. They're going to go check on the rental property. Buy rentals where your kids live. Start selling a, a product or a service as a family. Start a family business. Pass on this education to your grandchildren with a business that brings you together. Um, on a personal note, I haven't, I haven't talked about this at all. I've got a, a sister-in-law who went through divorce and she's got four kids and two, two sons, two daughters. And these two boys are a teenager and 14, 12 years old. And they don't have a lot to do. And they're playing video games 10 hours freaking a day. And you're right. And so um, I've, I've, I've been I've been. I've been trying to um, spend time with them, and they need that experience. And, and their father's a great guy, but he doesn't live locally and all that stuff. But, um, and so um, I've got them both fired up starting businesses. And, and they want to do stuff on YouTube. I'm like, let's do it. And all of a sudden, they're like, hold it. This, this adult, a male role model, cares about what I'm doing, and we're going to start a business together, and I'm going to make money, and I can use YouTube. I mean, I get texts from, when are you coming over? What can we do? You know, I could spend half my day every day being a mentor to these, <clears throat> being a mentor to these kids, and it would it change their lives. And that's this is not we're just not saving taxes. We're creating incubators that we can bring our family into, and have a huge impact in their lives. And 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 you may think, why well, I freaking missed the boat with my own kids? It's never too late. You may have a thirty-something year old that just doesn't get how to have a bank account that's not negative, and you're like, let's work together. Let's figure this out. And you don't have a tool to do that with. There's no tool in the toolbox. How do, I, how do I do that? Small business. That's your tool. I just gave you a tool to mentor someone in your family that needs it. I have a father-in-law, manages two of my rentals. Loves it. Has nothing really else to do generally except plan his garden for the next year and do this and that. Loves to go kick the butt of my tennis. Get those garbages out! You know, he's like... You know, he's, oh, man, you, you hate those little neighbor old, old men property managers if you're a, a college student. You know, like, he's all over. Where's he at? Okay, he's coming around the corner, you know. Anyway, he's... A, but, and I can compensate him. Your parents don't want handouts. How many of you in this room are taking care of an older parent? You know, maybe. Why not engage them in the business together. Make them feel useful again. Get them involved. They've learned something in their life. They're amazing. Our parents have so much to share with us. Let's get them involved in the business and, and uh, help them get more money. They don't want handouts. They want to earn it. I, I dream of ways to get my kids to make money. I, I'm like, okay, I can have them do more QuickBooks. I can have them do, I'm, I'm dreaming up jobs for them. Now the older they get, they're like, Dad, I really don't have to do that. I guess you do. You know. <laughs> so anyway, so this is this topic. This is family. And maybe, some of you may be thinking I'm beating this to death, but I've got to. It's that important. I'm going to help my children or my family become self-reliant. That's a one-week workshop, right? And we're spending 10, 15 minutes on it. Teach small business ownership skills. How many of us wish our parents would have taught us about a small business? And my, luckily, I my dad did, and that's why I'm a geek when it comes to this. I, and my mom, they were great. We, anyway, I could start telling stories again. Okay, instill the concept of a job well done. Uh, someone asked, Mark, you've got to tell the Molly story. And so I'm going to tell my Molly story, which some of you may see me done live before on a Saturday. But um, teaching my daughter, she doesn't get paid until she does a job. Whoa, does that sound like, that's torture. I'm a bad parent. <laughs> no, you don't get the money until you do the work. But I'm going to the mall right now. I need the money now. I'll do it later. I'll, have you ever heard these words come out of the mouth of a family member? I'll come home and do the dishes later. <laughs> I just need the money now. Do those dishes ever get done? No. I'm, <laughs> I'm living this. I'm with you. <laughs> All right. Save money in the business without having to hire outside help. Sometimes you can save a lot of money making it a family business. And I've got just story after story we can share there. And then teach them how to do a hard day's work if you're lucky. 
Um, it's tough nowadays. You know, the, the days of the family farm, the family business are going away further and further. This digital age, kids on video games. I can barely get, a, get a, go on a drive with these two boys, these two nephews of mine. When they get in the car, they know they can't play video games on their phone. I'm going to talk to them. <laughs> I have to communicate? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, am I right? All right. So here's my employee of the month. Uh, this was uh, Molly here, right here, employee of the month. This is where, and I've kept that little piece of paper in that box of, remember, you know, I got, I got an award for this or an award, a ribbon for this. I keep that in the box. That says employee of the month on the wall. Molly's six years old. So one of the common questions I know many of you are going to ask already, I put kids on payroll when they're about six years old. Uh, at that point, they can polish shell casings with their fingers and shred paper. They get their fingers stuck in the shredder, but it's good for them. And, and teaches, you know, teaches responsibility. I think it's really good. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay, now, anyway. But no, I, I think you can get your kids on payroll around six years old, cleaning the office, shredding paper, emptying the garbage. It's a legitimate cost that you're going to pay for anyway, and I can fight it all day long with the IRS. By the way, um, first comment, I have never, listen, those on ho at home, I have never had in 20 years a client audited for having their kids on payroll. Never. I haven't even heard of a CPA that has had an, an audit because the family was on the payroll. Because that's what family business is about. You, you don't think some New York City deli is paying the kids that come, over, come to the deli after school and work in the deli slicing bread? I've got a family farm in Idaho where they're growing potatoes. The kids work on it all summer long. Is that not a legitimate write-off? I've got families in San Diego, and they're going by the rental property to mow the lawn or pick up trash. They're at home office in Phoenix, Arizona, shredding paper and stuffing envelopes. Teenagers that are designing websites for their parents as their school project. I mean, we've got to think outside the box here, but we can do it. Now, some people say, well, Mark, I'm an artist, and, you know, my kids are under age six, and I'm going to write them off as a model. It's always hard, because I say, well, let me see a picture of your kid. Oh, no, we're getting off. That's not going to cut it. <laughs> No, I would not do that. That would be very rude. I would not. I'm like, don't bring your kid to the audit. No. Your, your kid's not Miley Cyrus. I hate to tell you, it's really happening. Um, so anyway, but um, uh, I do have some clients that use the modeling expense, and I want to repeat this live and recorded because this gets abused. Uh, if you have a business that has a product or project or something that relates to children, let's think pediatrician. Let's think dentist for, for that has children as a, a customer. Are you going to have maybe artwork and uh, pictures on your website and other things that a, a picture of your child would make sense? I'm cool. I have an artist in Maui, great guy, does world-class art. He's used his children as models in artwork that he actually sells. Modeling fee. Pay the kids, let them pay for private school. I just got a write-off for private school. Let your kids pay for their own expenses. My Molly, who's now 16, ah, it was 10 years ago, now 16, I keep this picture because it's just so special. This is when they were nice. This is when they loved me. This is when they'd run up and hug me and talk to me. <laughs> Those days are gone. Teenage girls. <sighs> just saying, ah. Okay, anyway, so, uh, but, um, so, uh, <laughs> but this is, um, where was I going? What did I say right before that? Anybody? Oh, let them pay their own expenses. Molly has her own debit card, and we're going to go through the procedure here. But I just, again, want you so excited and sold on this, but, and then we'll get into the practicalities. Molly has her own deb debit card, and if she's got to buy school lunch, she uses her debit card. Um, this, week, this last weekend, now at age 16, she's had um, a, a winter dance. And I thought, well, oh, that's cool. I'll give her a hundred bucks. That's fair for shoes and dress and nails and all that. Was that cut it, ladies? No, no it was like I was buying a car, you know? I was like, freaking. <laughs> so I, my, I, need to, I need to go get my hair done and I need nails and my roots are growing out. And, uh, and the sky's falling. I'm like, it's a dance for crying out loud. I, I've got to order three shoes because I don't know which ones are going to, I'll return them to Amazon, I promise. And, I, and then I, this dress, it's got to be modest. I can't find it. Do not go. Oh my gosh. When I, I came home the other, it's like two weeks ago. I'm like, here's the debit card. Let her pay for her dress. And then mom and daughter start trying to find modest dresses. I was out of there. I mean, I literally went and got a hotel for three days because, uh, <laughs> right, moms? Have you ever had to have that fight? That's not, you can't wear that. What the hell? You're, you're not wearing cleavage at 14. Uh, you know, whatever, right? 
You moms, right moms? Come on, give me some affirmations, right? It was nuts, the fights. So, but I got a write-off. <laughs> she paid for her own dress. Instead of me paying taxes at my effective rate, remember my effective rate, I took a write-off, paid Molly. Molly bought her own dress. I paid no tax. She didn't even pay taxes because she's under a certain age. So let's get into it. So there's my employee of the month. This is when Molly opened her bank account. I love this picture too. Wells Fargo gave her a little horse and they gave her a tour of the vault. This is a great opportunity for some of you to take that niece or nephew or grandchild or child of your own and take them down and open their first bank account. And it's just really fun. Banks love this. Oh my gosh. They want to, they're like the McDonald's approach to brainwashing your kids. McDonald's want to get kids addicted to food, so they always go to McDonald's. These banks want kids to think, Molly knows now, I, I, I bank at Wells Fargo. There's another bank out there in the world? No, it's just Wells Fargo. So they're going to give your kids the royal treatment. Here she fell asleep on the job. Um, she almost got fired for this. Was not happy. <laughs> not good. Yeah, so she's asleep there. Um, this is a teenager getting paid. They're not as thrilled. Uh, that's Allison when she was 16. Um, but look what she's doing on the screen. If you could see it, she's doing QuickBooks. <laughs> Teach your kids bookkeeping. I just want to, I'm, okay, I'm going to get into the procedure. Look at this. I've got a really cool diagram. We're going to get into procedure. But um, one last story. So um, did I really say one last story? This is Mark Kohler. One more story before I get into the technical. Uh, Allison um, and all my kids have learned QuickBooks. Um, there's always a little bank account that can use reconciling. Let me assure you, my children are not doing the books at the law firm, okay? So you're okay. <laughs> They're doing books for maybe a rental property or some little thing. So uh, Allison's doing QuickBooks, and when they were grounded, they had to watch my QuickBooks videos on how to do QuickBooks, and uh, I'd make them stay home and watch QuickBooks. Um, but they learned QuickBooks. So Allison goes off to college, and she was so happy because I was not around to give her jobs. Um, anyway, my, we're, I'm known in the house for even if my kids bring friends over, I'll quickly find a job for all of them to do. Hey, do you want to make 20 bucks? I need this moved. And they're like, and my, they're like, Dad, would you quit hiring my friends? Just, you know. <laughs> anyway, so Molly, Allison goes off to college. She's a freshman, and she could not wait to get out from under Dad's umbrella. And she's like, I'm going to go get a job. Oh, you're going to go get a real job. That's great. Let's see how that goes. That's good. And I do. I want her to get out and find out what that other world's like, where she, her dad's not her boss. So she goes to go work at a restaurant. Seems cool. And I'm going to serve tables. I'm like, that's great. That's cool. So she gets to this little cafe, starts serving tables, making, you know, like eight or nine dollars an hour, scrapping for tips. And real quick, she realized, oh my gosh, and this is what other people make. And I, oh, wow. You know, all the reality check of hourly wages and having to clean up and deal with pissy customers, right? So I was, I was just sitting back going, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so she's doing this. And one day the owner was bouncing around and talking to everybody. And he said something about the books and QuickBooks. And Allison was like, yeah, I know QuickBooks. And she's been doing, I, my dad's made me learn it over the years. Blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, whoa, 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 you know QuickBooks? And she's like, yeah, I, what's the big deal? Doesn't everybody know QuickBooks? Doesn't everybody have a miserable dad like me? You know, and so, <laughs> and, and the guy's like, holy, you know QuickBooks? And she's like, yeah, and I'm blah, blah, blah. And says a few things, the guy's like, boom, put down what you're doing, come back with me. They go into the office, and she's like, yeah, I could reconcile that. I used to reconcile a bank account for a rental property and da, 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 da. She's 19 years old and knows QuickBooks. The guy's like, do you want to raise? Got a $5 an hour raise to sit there and start doing QuickBooks and got off the front end. And she was like, whoa. You you mean this helps? You know, this really, right? And it was like, oh my gosh, I got a phone call. Dad, oh my gosh, you're amazing. I'm like, hold on, let me record this. Okay, I'm like, start. Okay, start again. What'd you say? Okay, is this Allison? Are you on drugs? I told you don't do drugs, you know. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So you're gonna really pass on skills that um, can really help so many people. Okay, so now I said, if any of you do not have children, Never want children, don't even know anyone under age 18. You can go to the bathroom right now and take a break, but here we go. So this is kids under age 18, then we're gonna do kids 18 and over, and then we're gonna do grandkids. And I wanna show you the procedure. Um, any questions, we'll just stop at each slide. Okay, now here's the first rule. <sighs> Your kids do not pay taxes. None of us pay income taxes on the first $12,400 in 2020. Okay, now look at this. This is the new standard deduction. Again, for those of you that hate Donald Trump, <laughs> don't, you know, 
what do you look a gift horse in the face, whatever? I don't know how they say that. But this is huge. They doubled it. Your kids can make $12,400 and don't pay taxes at all. They don't even need to file a tax return. What? That's the new rule. So number one, when you pay your kids under age 18, they don't even have to file a tax return on the first $12,400. The rule. Number two, when you pay your own children. Now, if you have stepchildren living in the house, your stepmom, stepdad, and they're, they're all under the roof and you're their dependents, whatever, whatever the case is, you don't have to withhold Suda, Fuda, FICA, or workers' comp on your own kids. You, you can slave labor your own kids, no problem. <laughs> so there's no withholdings. You don't even have to issue a W-2. Now, I know there's CPAs in the room or somewhere at home that just said, this Kohler, you, you just lost my respect. Everybody that gets paid has to have a W-2. No, they don't. Because think, walk me, let me walk you through this. If I hire someone else's kid, I gotta carry workers comp, I gotta give them a W-2. If they're under age 18, I can only work them so many hours a month. McDonald's can only hire part-time kids to work so many hours, they can't work after certain hours. There's all sorts of labor laws that protect children from predatory employers, right? And then they gotta withhold taxes and all that. On my own kids, <laughs> I guess those rules still apply, but who are they gonna complain to? But anyway, some of, but when it comes to the withholdings, you don't have to withhold unemployment, pseudo FICA, or workers comp on your own kids. And so if I don't give them a W-2 for their wages, what's the penalty? Go to Circular, it's C, it's, go, to, go check it out, guys, gals. What's the penalty if I don't give someone a W-2? It's a percentage of the withholdings. There is no withholdings. But there is no penalty. This is why in 20 years, whenever I work with an IRS agent or try to solve this problem and talk to IRS agent, I got a former IRS agent as a, as a partner, they're like, there's, there's no harm, no foul. There's no penalty. Why do they need a W-2? They're under 12-4 anyway. Now, if you want to issue a W-2, do it. Just make sure you don't do any withholding. And we're definitely not going to give them a 1099. We'll come to that in a second. Because now, if, well, I'll say it now. If I give my kids a 1099, what did I just give them? Short-term, long-term, what did I give them? What kind of income is that called? Ordinary. What tax applies? FICA, self-employment tax. So if a, if a kid... Now, this is true, and I have clients that live in L.A., and their kids are doing auditions every day. And when Miley Cyrus, to bring her name up again, went and did an audition at Disney, and if she got a 1099 for doing a commercial, does she pay self-employment tax? Yes, even though she's under age 18. But if they were to pay her parents and her parents pay her, there's no withholding. Is that interesting? So when your kids work for someone else, they're going to get withholdings. But when you pay them, you don't have to. So 1099s are dangerous. And I have CPAs that are like, well, I'm at least going to 1099 the kids. Oh, no, that creates the audit because now I got a 1099 on that kid's social and no return. Oh, my gosh. And if I file a return, I got to withhold FICA. Well, I've got to better give them a W-2. No, what's the penalty if you don't? Zero. I've been down this path, people. Okay, so standard deduction, no withholdings. That's rule number one. Now, here's where it gets cool. If you're going to pay your kids, okay, so we're talking practicalities now. Before you even start paying them, they have to have their own bank account. Okay, now that can be a hurdle. Because when you go down to Wells Fargo and open a bank account for a grandkid or a child that's under 12, the bank kind of freaks out. Because they're like, uh, we, don't, we have teen checking accounts that are free because they want to get the kids involved in, with the family in the bank. So you can go in with a teenager and go, I need a teen checking account. Even Wells Fargo has a little pamphlet for that. But if, I go, if they're under age 12 and I go and try to open a bank account, a lot of times they're not going to do it. Um, and let me finish this train of thought that I'm coming to you. Can you get her a mic? So what, what I do is if your bank is being a pain in the butt, you just open a joint account with them. So then they can have a debit card because I want the kids to have a debit card. And you don't have to get cash reserve credit, the little visa symbol on it. Just make it a straight up debit card and your co-signers. And then their name can be on the checkbook or on the debit card. 